case. I think that's going to be uh, really quite exciting in terms of uh, this committee having the ability to influence more services locally. I think that's going to be really good. And, and I'm really, again, pleased with the, um, some, of the, 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 um, some of the projects that you've listed out in here. It's going really well. So thank you for that. The next item on my, I think we agree this, or we note the progress that we learned in relation to work being done uh, in respect of the constituency working approach. Is that agreed? Yeah, okay, fantastic. Next item, again for you, Jane, uh, is the Your Wirral Grants Program. And you're going to introduce this. Uh, yes, sir, this item is the um, allocation of the Your Wirral Grants for local groups. Um, reports the last committee set out where this uh, funding has, has come from in that it is a, um, a, some money from uh, Magenta Living which uh, we've agreed to allocate through the constituency committees. Um, all of the detail of, of, of the kind of backgrounds that was set out in, in the previous report and, and uh, reference here. Um, the process for um, um, the grant allocation was done via a panel of um, ward councillors, one from each ward, um, and their names are, are set out in, in the report. Um, we had um, quite a lot of applications uh, through for the All World um, Fund. Uh, we were in fact oversubscribed. Um, I think we had over 30 applications um, amounting to kind of around sort of 60,000 um, pound mark in terms of what people were looking to um, to be allocated and we had 40,000. So we went through a process of um, stripping out the ineligible ones because Magenta Living had put some um, fairly strict criteria around that in terms of where organisations needed to be based, etc. And then we looked at a, an approach whereby we allocated, we scored the projects, and those that scored highest um, were allocated the money. Those that scored slightly lower um, have been offered or will be offered subject to the decision of the committee um, of 50% of, of the grant uh, or thereabouts depending on, on, on what was being requested. Um, I'm happy to read through the list of organisations who have been successful but I'm not sure whether that's, that's absolutely necessary. Um, but this is um, the recommendations listed at Appendix 1 in terms of grant allocation are the recommendations of the panel of, of elected members that sat to look at the applications um, and I'm uh, presenting those to the committee on, on their behalf. Again, thank you, Jane, and uh, again, thank you to the other members of the committee, that was John, Wendy, Stuart, and uh, Louise. I can uh, assure the committee that we were arduous, rigorous, and scrutinised each, uh, each of the applications and the scoring mechanisms that have been applied. Uh, again, we, we do need to be careful here because Magenta has its own charitable status whatever happens with this, it needs to maintain its charitable status, which is a very key issue for colleagues in Magenta. Um, we've seen those, the, the committee themselves have seen those, are we content to agree the recommendations as outlined? Okay, thank you very much. Have you got something you want to yeah, I say? Yes, um, yeah, just one point. Um, last year, we had a little trouble finding out whether the money which had been allocated had been spent in one or two cases. Have we determined how long the applicants have got to actually put into effect the money that has been awarded to them? Very good question. I think we've got a good answer. You go, Jane. In terms of the grants programmes that this, the constituency community has, has oversaw, um, the, um, the community fund and the public health money from last year was due to be spent by, is due to be spent by December of this year, and I'm confident that all of those projects are, are underway, and if there is an extension, that it will only be into the new year. With these new uh, grants, uh, the Orwell grants, we're giving projects a year to complete the project um, from when they receive the money, so that will take us to November time next year. Um, there may be instances from previous area forum funding that you might be referring to, Council Holby, where we, where things might not have as yet been spent, and they are currently being followed up. Uh, but there's anything particular there, I'll, I'll of course look into that. Um, but I know that process is, is going on at the moment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and again, just to say, in my experience, Jane is assiduous in tracking that, not just to see if the money's been spent or spent properly, but actually to see the success of the project as 
as much as anything else, and, uh, and does a great job in terms of tracking that down. Okay, so we've agreed those recommendations uh, with that question, which is duly noted. Next item I've got on here is the uh, road safety budget, and again, um, I'm going to hand over to Jane, but certainly on behalf of the committee, thank Wendy, Jerry, Mike, Stuart, and David for the work that they did in, in looking at these particular allocations, but again, overseen and umpired by Jane from Go. Um, yeah, as, as the chair has, has inferred, uh, this was again a, a panel that came together to uh, look at the allocation of the committee's road safety budget, uh, which has come from the integrated transport block capital program uh, to a total of 77,750. Uh, I'm very grateful to uh, the councillors who uh, work with me on this, who put forward um, schemes in the local areas that, that, that could be looked at, uh, costed up, and uh, um, come together to form a, a, a programme of, of proposals um, which you'll find summarised in the report um, at um, 2.4 and also there's a substantive appendix to the report which sets out all of the schemes that were considered, the considerations that, that were looked at, um, the potential cost of that and, and whether the panel thought that was something that should be recommended as a priority for funding. Again, I, I don't think I need to read through the list in full, though. I'm happy to do if that's helpful. Um, just to say that, as with the, the committee's core budget, um, the panel uh, looked at a uh, allocation of the money that was uh, equitable across the five wards. So, uh, roughly speaking, each ward has got um, road safety schemes to a value of around 14,000. There was some money, um, some uh, funding uh, remaining from that discussion, uh, and the panel uh, was looking to recommend that we um, uh, put in some drop curves across the constituency again on an equitable basis across the five wards. Um, I say that that is the panel's recommendations um, and um, they may wish to chip in further um, and I'm presenting them to you. Anyone in the panel want to chip in? No? Okay. Good. In that case, uh, again, um, thanks Jane and the panel for the work that have done there. Again, our, and thank David too, sorry for the the work that you did in this, David, um, you know, against all the odds. Thank you very much for that. Uh, are people content to accept those recommendations? Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Um, next item I have on my agenda is Future Council. Um, colleagues may, may have spotted that a report has come fairly late. We are all remembering that we don't normally accept late. Boards. So what we're going to actually get is a presentation. Um, so are we ready for the presentation? Um, are saying that we're going to, in 2018, 
we'll need to save another 25 million on top of that. That's another 70 million over three years. Next year, so the, the financial year starting in April 2015, the budget gap at the moment is 18 million. This is just a brief little chart to show you how that's made up. Um, 14 million of it has come from inflation, demographic growth, old age of population. Um, reductions in grants of another 24 million. Um, but a part of the 57 million I mentioned earlier, it already agreed to say, it takes 20 million off that total. That leaves us with 18 million to find the savings for next year. That's why we established this project. And what we've tried to do is as much as, as, much as possible, it's, and it's, it, it is, it is just as much as possible, it'll never be perfect, but to try and limit the impact on actual frontline service delivery. Um, what we've done is every individual service we've reviewed, we've um, tried to remodel it, we've combined services together. What all of this is saying is essentially we've become a much, we're going to become a much smaller organisation. When I say we're combining services, we're redesigning services, essentially what that is is jobs. The council we're, we're having to get an awful lot, an awful lot smaller. What we have done is gone through each one of our services, we broke it down into 81 specific service areas. We went through each, each one with a fine tooth comb, what it spends, what it delivers, um, what, it, what it costs, what, it, what income it brings in, what it brings in more. We did that from the centre of the organisation. What we've also done is completely remodelled all of our back office services, so the stuff that you never see. My, my case, for example, HR, finance, IT, all of the back office stuff that they have read in many rarely seen. Completely been remodeled, redesigned, and uh, an awful lot smaller. Again, we have had to, with the, the, the vast majority of these savings have come from the council workforce essentially. We've been just reducing the number of, the number of staff that we've got. Um, being part of the organisation, we're actually, we're actually excluded from that process in line with the priorities I mentioned earlier, things like elements of social care um, and those services with the closest relationship to protect the public. We're also proposing to take further saving of 1.5 million through redesigning and reducing the council senior management structure. So we did, we'll be proposing that here and on in the year. Um, I'm going to start going through now the individual budget options themselves. Now before I get into this, none of this is very nice. There's no good news in this. Um, what I'd say is that none of, none of these are actually recommendations. None of them are actual decisions that have already been taken. They're simply proposals from the chief executive actually how we might achieve the rest of the budget gap. And they're out for public consultation at the moment. Um, I'll start off with this now. Initially, what I'm going to try and do is an awful lot of, particularly the members that are here tonight, on, on committee will have heard this before, where I've got, where we've got a specific geographic impact on this, on this constituency area, I'll try to give you a little bit more information on the specific impact for the constituency, where it's, where it's obvious, where it's where it's First one is looking for the different models to deliver the areas of services at West Kirby Marine League. That is, that, that is essentially looking for somebody else to put in for, for, for us or on our behalf or in partnership with us or just looking to achieve some savings from how we deliver that service. The next one, all age disability service, is a 600,000 saving through remodeling our children with disability service, primarily operating out of a place called Willow Creek, which is a respite home for children with disabilities. It should have a massive impact in terms of the actual service delivery, but what we'll be doing, as well as doing this with public consultation, we'll be working one-to-one -one with every family that actually access that service before any of that change is put in. So that's essentially going to be, it's going to be on the ground, it's going to be things like open and hours, it's going to be how often it's available, it's quite a few different operational changes, but an awful lot of one-to-one -one consultation with the people who use them. The use and play option is quite wide-ranging. Um, it's four hundred and fifty thousand pounds saving that would essentially restrict our youth funding, our youth centre funding, onto the four main hubs at West Kirby, Eastern, um, West Kirby, Eastern, Bergen, Head, and Wallace. Um, particularly in this constituency, that would involve the funding associated with defending youth funding up to one year to be removed, as well as another three youth centres in the one in each other constituency. It would also remove the funding for the play service, which are three locations at the moment: at Beechwood, Dalton Road, and Leesop. And it would also be resulting in having no funding to run junior benefit schemes or junior or civic award schemes. So obviously a, a, a very serious option and a 450,000 saving. Um, <coughs> the, 
The first one here is preventative maintenance. Now, Whittle is quite unusual um, in terms of how it funds maintenance for roads and for parks in that the vast majority of councils just use grant funding for this. The Whittle Council has actually got funding in the base uh, that, that, that we actually add into the add into that fund. This option would mean that we just use grant funding only. We wouldn't put any, any base funding into, into the preventative maintenance on roads or parks. What it would be is maintenance on safety related conditions only. School crossing patrols is an option that has been put forward a couple of times at various guys over the past few years. This one would result in a review of every school crossing patrol across, across the border. And where there are events determined after a, road, after a risk assessment that there are existing road safety measures in place, a pelican, a pump, and a two-string uh, crossing, we potentially remove that school crossing patrol. There's the list of, of uh, the crossings that are actually in the constituency. Not all 